Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about overloading functions. So let's get started. What, what, what do we mean by, when we talk about overloading functions? When you overload a function, all that means is that you can have multiple functions that share the same name. So you can have 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 12, 16 different function definitions that all have the same name. So long as the parameter lists are different, so long as they are uniquely identifiable. So for example, a great easy example of that is, you know, if you have a function named foo that has one parameter, and then you have another function named foo that has two, that's, that's it, right? So this is a convenient way for you to have functions that maybe have similar logic, but only implement that logic using different numbers of arguments. Okay, so it's an optional tool to have in your toolbox. It's not something that you have to use, but it's nice to be able to break out every once in a while. You don't have to have unique names for every single function. Again, so long as the parameter list is the same or are different, excuse me. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at an example of this. Okay, so I'll use prototypes and I'll use function definitions, right? So overloaded functions, overloaded functions, functions with the same name right but different parameter lists okay really quick easy example of this let's say i'm going to make a couple of different functions that uh, find the sum of some numbers okay so i could have say a function called add okay and i'll give it two parameters and then we'll define that add function okay so int a int b right and so you know there's nothing special here there's nothing complicated about this uh, example it's just a function that's going to return two numbers right so we'll go ahead and we'll just test it okay add three and five and you know what are we going to see on the screen we're going to see um, eight right because three plus five is uh, eight okay so there's your answer now the uh, overloaded function is just a function, again, that shares the same name, but different parameter lists. So take a look at this. Okay, normally you have to have unique identifiers for everything, but this part right here, the parameter list, the, 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 the parameter lists right here, this makes up part of what's called the function signature. And so long as the signatures are unique, you can have the same name, okay? So we'll go down here and we'll say int add, int a, int b, int c, okay? So return a plus b plus c. So, I mean, that's, that's really it. It's just a matter of making sure that those parameter lists are different. And so the compiler can take a look at the arguments that you have in your function call. So see, there's the second value. Um, and match up with the definition, right? So you see, you got three integers here, okay? And so that's gonna require a function call to a function named add that has or accepts three integers, okay? And um, this add function here that accepts two integers as arguments, the compiler can look at that and go, oh, okay, well, I have a function named add that accepts two integers. So it matches up, it's gonna compile uh, just fine. So, so long as the compiler can make that decision, right, by matching up those parameters, then you're going to be uh, just fine. Okay, now what happens if we do something like this? Okay, let's say that we're going to create a function um, <clears throat> that returns a double and adds floating point numbers. Okay, so we'll define that, or we'll try to define that, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we'll call this uh, A and we'll call this double parameter B and we'll just have it do the same thing, right? It's just going to return the sum of its two arguments. So return A plus B. Okay, now are the, is there any problems here? Okay, is there any problems here? Well, let's go ahead and compile it and run it and see if our compiler gives us any problems. Okay, now 8 and 16. No problem, but the question becomes, well, which version did get called? Was it the add 
with the two integer parameters or was it the add with the two double parameters, right? Because you can pass three as an argument to a double parameter or as an integer parameter. Well, the compiler looks at the three and the five and says, oh, well, those are both integers. So we're gonna go ahead and pass it to the one that requires both integers, okay? Now, if I did something like this, see out add 1.6 and 3.2, you know, how's that gonna play out? Okay, well, let's try it and find out. Okay, are we gonna get the right answer? Yes, we are, why? Because, right, the argument list, 1.6, 3.2, Okay, those are both doubles. Those both match up with doubles here. So it's this version of the add function that's going to get called. Now what happens if we try to make a call, or you know, call the function and pass a double and a integer? Okay, will the compiler be able to handle that? Okay, you can see that red squiggle there, so you might be able to uh, figure out what's gonna happen that, that uh, it's not gonna be able to handle it, right? Why not? Well, take a look at that error there. It says error C2666, uh, add two overloads with similar conversions. Okay, so I mean, what does that mean? It can't tell the difference. It can't, because of the arguments, it can't identify which version of add it should use, right? Because either one of these could be past 1.2 or two. Which one do you actually want, right? Because it doesn't match up with both of them, okay, or with either of them, I should say. But, you know, if this version of add didn't exist, okay, you could still pass, you, know, you could still pass 1.1 and 2 to this add function right here, right? Because that 1.1 would get stored in that first double parameter, and then that 2 would just get implicitly converted into a double. Okay, um, so that could work in that case, okay? But if you've got two different versions with two different parameter lists, see how now the red squiggle's gone? You know, it can't tell which one you mean to call, right? So that's, that's the thing. When we talk about the compiler having to be able to tell, right, based off of your argument list and based off of the parameters and that matching up, that's, that's what we mean. Okay, now if I had something like this, a uh, double and an int, okay, how will the compiler handle that? Okay, and then this will be our last example. Okay, so uh, we'll have this return a double. Okay, so we'll just um, return um, a plus b. And then we'll name this A and we'll rename this B. Okay. It'd be useful if I actually made this return type double also. Okay. Now let's take a look. Is that going to work? Yep. That one works. Why? Because now the first parameter is a double, second parameter is an int, first argument is a double, second parameter is an int, and so it can match. Okay. So it's just a matter of, again, making sure that the compiler can match an argument list with a distinct parameter list. And so long as that's the case, you can name the functions, you can have as many functions with the same name um, as you want, okay? So that's everything that I have for you in this video. What did we look at? And what are overloaded functions? If you thought the video was useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, well, you've got the thumbs down button as well. Please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got memberships. We've got super thanks. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell when you know when there are additional videos posted. And if you're a student of mine, as usual, if you have any questions about that, send me an email. Hit me up on my office hours and log into Zoom and let me know what your question is. Okay. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.